Welcome to Traveler's Tales. I am your host, Greg Alonzo. Today I will be your guide through history as we take a look at Aristotle, the father of the sciences. Before we begin, just a quick reminder that we post new videos every Tuesday and Friday. Don't forget to hit the little bell icon to be notified each time we post new videos. Moving right along, mythology tells us one thing while archaeology tells us another. Who was Aristotle and why is he still important today? Aristotle was the most renowned student of Plato. He was known to have been the founder of the Lyceum, the Peripatetic School of Philosophy, and the Aristelian tradition. Aristotle's writings cover everything from biology to zoology. As a result, his philosophy has exerted a unique influence on almost every form of knowledge in the West. Even to this day, Aristotle's writings are a topic of contemporary philosophical discussion. Who was this genius of antiquity who has so influenced our world? Unfortunately, little is known about Aristotle's life. On an interesting note, in ancient Greek, his name means best purpose. We do know that he was born in 384 before the Common Era in the city of Stagira, which is in northern Greece and about 55 kilometers or 35 miles east of modern-day Thessaloniki. We also know that Aristotle's father, Nicomachus, was the personal physician to King Amyntas of Macedon. Unfortunately, both Aristotle's parents died when he was a child, and he was brought up by a guardian by the name of Proxenus. At 17 or 18 years of age, he joined Plato's academy in Athens. He remained at the academy until the age of 37. Upon the death of Plato, Aristotle left Athens. Tradition has it that he was disappointed with the academy's direction after control passed to Plato's nephew. At the request of King Philip II of Macedon, he was hired to tutor the king's son. This brilliant young man would later come to be known as Alexander the Great. It was in fact Aristotle who encouraged Alexander to look eastward for conquest. Aristotle's own attitude towards Persia was unabashedly ethnocentric. In one famous example, he counsels Alexander to be a leader to the Greeks and a despot to the barbarians and to look after the former as friends and relatives and the latter as beasts and plants. While in Macedon, Aristotle was appointed to head the Royal Academy. He also taught two other future kings, Ptolemy and Cassander. Later, Aristotle established a library in the Lyceum which helped him to produce many of his hundreds of books on papyrus scrolls. Though Aristotle wrote many elegant treatises and dialogues for publication, only about a third of his original output has survived. What about Aristotle's personal life? While visiting the island of Lesbos, he met and married the lovely Pythias. She was most likely the daughter or niece of his friend Hermias from Asia Minor. Pythias bore Aristotle a daughter, whom they also named Pythias. Upon the death of Pythias, Aristotle became involved with a woman by the name of Perphilus, who later bore him a son. Aristotle named him after his father, Nicomachus. What happened to them? Unfortunately, not much is known and they were lost to history. In 335 before the Common Era, Aristotle returned to Athens and established his school known as the Lyceum. Over the next 12 years, Aristotle conducted courses at the school and composed many of his works. Sadly, near the end of his life, Alexander and Aristotle became estranged over Alexander's relationship with Persia and Persians. A widespread tradition in antiquity has it that Aristotle may have played a part in Alexander's death. However, no evidence has ever been found to substantiate such a claim. Some years later, Aristotle was denounced by the Athenians for his impiety. This prompted him to flee to his mother's family estate, Calchas and Euobia. With his departure of Athens, tradition makes claim that Aristotle's departing statement was, I will not allow the Athenians to sin twice against philosophy. He was referring to the trial and execution of Socrates. Aristotle died on Euobia of natural causes later that same year. 
He had named his student Antipater as his chief executor and leaving a will in which he asked to be buried next to his wife. More than 2300 years after his death, Aristotle remains one of the most influential people who ever lived. He contributed to almost every field of human knowledge and was the founder of many new fields. This brings us to the end of Aristotle, the father of the sciences. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Traveler's Tales. Just a reminder that we post new videos every Tuesday and Friday. Don't forget to hit the little bell icon to be notified each time we post new videos. For your convenience, we have posted our email address and Instagram information. We enjoy hearing from our subscribers and encourage you to contact us with any questions or comments you may have. If you haven't subscribed to Traveler's Tales, please do. This really is the best way to help our channel grow. Traveler's Tales will return with Part 2 of Aristotle, the Father of the Sciences. Until we meet again at the crossroads of folklore and fact, Cartistos. <laughs>